actually got started as a, as a drummer. Um, my parents were very supportive and they sought out the best teacher in the area who was named Eugene Babe Fabrizi. He was in Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania. And every Saturday, my mother would uh, come home from work uh, around noon, would hop in the car, and we would drive the one-hour trip to Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania, and I would take my lesson with Babe, as we called him, uh, and come home. And I did that every week uh, for quite a long time. Now, Babe was the kind of teacher that you weren't just going to be a drummer. He wanted uh, his better students to become percussionists. You had to learn timpani, you had to learn mallet instruments, drum set, all the hand percussion. He, he really wanted you to be a well-rounded guy that could do a lot of the, the shows and things like that that came in. And uh, that was going to be my life. I was pretty much a, a classically trained percussionist and something that I aspired to and liked and really wanted to do forever and ever. I was very fortunate at an early age. Uh, well, first of all, once, once I discovered the mallet side of percussion, I, I was sold. I, the fact that I could take my my drumming uh, techniques and my rhythmical independence and apply it to uh, an instrument that I could play melodies on and harmonies. Uh, I was sold. This is, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a mallet player. So I really, really concentrated on that aspect of, of percussion. Reading seemed to come easy to me. I, I enjoyed reading. Uh, I mean, you could give me a piece of music and for some reason, it was just never hard for me to take that piece of music and apply it to my instrument and play it. And that's probably the, the strongest thing that got me started in my career. At a, at a very early age, I got involved with all of the orchestras uh, in the western Pennsylvania uh, area. I was doing things with the Pittsburgh Youth Symphony, the Pittsburgh Symphony, the Wilkinsburg Symphony, Monroeville Symphony. Uh, I was involved with the International Symphony in Switzerland, uh, only because at that time, there weren't many mallet players. I was sort of a little niche by myself, and anything that required uh, reading a tuned instrument, uh, I seemed to get the call. So if I had to read chime parts, xylophone parts, marimba, vibes, bells, glockenspiel, whatever, that was kind of my, my forte when I did. And uh, I mean, I, I had the other stuff somewhat together, but I wouldn't say that was my main uh, emphasis, but mallets were. After a, a rehearsal, or actually it was after a concert because I had my tuxedo on with, with the symphony, my ride home, I was too young to drive, so my ride home said, hey, Jerry, I got these tickets to go to the Pittsburgh Three Rivers Jazz Festival. Want to go? No, I, I, I didn't want to go to that. I, I had to go home. I had to go work on my classical. I had to practice. I, I, I didn't have time to support that kind of music, not anything I really wanted to get involved with. And uh, it was about, I guess, 12 or 12 miles to my home, and I really didn't want to walk that far. So I said, "Look, let's let's go to this this jazz concert, and but let's leave. Let's let's leave fairly early. I didn't want to spend too much time there because I've got things to do." And I remember going, and it was the Herbie Hancock band, and I was fascinated. I mean, I was watching them, and the audience. I mean, thirty thousand people there. And you'd see Herbie up there playing piano, and Ron Carter was playing, and the communication they had back and forth, and the drummer, and everything was just fun and tight, and, and they were having a great time. There was no music on the stage, and I remember the hair on the back of my neck stood up. It was like, wow, this, this is something special, and I had to figure this out. Now, fortunately, because of my association uh, with, with all the classical music in the orchestras, uh, the Ludwig Musser Company, uh, this was 1972, came out with uh, a development instrument that they were working on with synthetic bars. It was a marimba 
but it had this thing called Keylon Bars, which were a replacement for Honduras Rosewood. So they brought it to Pittsburgh at the Mideast Music Conference and they needed somebody to play it. Of course, I was the mallet player, so I got the call to do this. And I met Mr. Ludwig and a guy by the name of Dick Richardson, and at that time, uh, I was a junior in high school, I got my first uh, signed endorsement with the Ludwig Muster Company, which I was very excited about. I was at an event with, uh, with Ludwig Musser, and I don't remember where it was, but I ran into another Musser artist, his name was Gary Burton, and uh, he's a jazz vibraphone player. And I said, hey, uh, you know, once we met, we were sitting down at dinner together or something, I said, you know, I, I'm fascinated with jazz. I, I, I need to learn a little bit more about it and, and, and how to develop, you know, the, the whole concept of what's going on with improvisation. And at that time, Gary says, well, hey, I teach at Berklee College of Music. Why don't you come? You can be my student. And I did. I went to Berkeley, and Berkeley was the best thing I could have ever done in my life. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much how I got into jazz and how I you know, developed into a, a clinician with the Ludwig Muster Company. Now, Ludwig has been a very uh, supportive company of me since the beginning. And, and to be honest with you, the Musser instruments have always set the standard of quality and perfection and sound that other companies try to emulate. And when I first got into the, the mallet aspect, uh, there were really only maybe two, maybe three mallet companies. There was Musser, there was Deegan, and um, to be honest with you, I'm not sure of any others. But anyway, so the Musser instruments were always the one that set the standard of tone and quality and excellence and sound and build. And so I was very glad that this is this was the endorsement that I got because uh, this is the company that I wanted to play their instruments only because I, I believe in the instruments. I'm not the kind of guy that runs from company to company because of, of a good deal or they're offering more, more money or this or that. I have to play an instrument that I trust, that I know the sound that I'm going to get out of. Uh, and, and Musser is, is a standard right now of the world. That's what I do. That's how I got into it, and I, I love what I do. I really like uh, being a musician and being a mallet player, so to speak. Uh, again, I, I expressed the, the uh, I guess, the negative side of the instrument. But at the same time, by, by it being a novelty instrument, it kind of makes it a little cooler. In, in other words, when you show up, people look at it, and they're kind of like fascinated with your instrument. And then when you pull out your mallets, and I'm a four mallet player, and I'm holding four mallets right away, they're like, whoa, I've never seen anything like this. This guy's got two of these sticks, they call them, in either hand, and he's going to play this thing. And then all you got to do is play well, and you want them over. So it, it's got that plus going for it. Um, I love what I do, and I hope to continue doing this for the rest of my life. And again, I, I need to thank uh, the Ludwig Musser Company, or the Con Selmer Company, the parent company now. And they have been, again, very supportive, and I, I just have a great relationship with them, and I look forward to that continuing for forever. So thank you so much. <laughs>